In today's video, we're going to talk about how gun handling works in World of Tanks. Nah, don't listen to him. Gun handling is a lie in World of Tanks. What? What are you talking about? Yeah, you heard me. Yeah, the game decides when I hit or miss a target. Uh, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and disagree on that one. The aim time in the garage is always way longer in game. I'm sorry, did you read the tooltip in the garage? My dispersion never matches what it says in game. It's always way bigger. Like seriously, all you have to do is hover your mouse over it and, and it tells you that in the tooltip. You know what, whatever, I don't have to watch this video. All right then. Well, for anyone else that's not wearing a tinfoil hat and is still curious on how gun handling works, I'm your Watt Coach 13 Disciple, and this is how gun handling works in a world of tanks. So first we need to define what dispersion actually is. So the tooltip in the game says gun dispersion is characterized by the maximum shell deviation from the aiming point at a distance of 100 meters. What does that actually mean? So let's say we have a dispersion value of 0.42. That means that at a range of 100 meters, the shell will deviate a maximum of 42 centimeters or 0.42 meters from the center of your reticle. So if we throw a reticle on the screen, that means from the center of the reticle to the very edge is 0.42 meters. A lot of people think that it's the diameter when in fact at 100 meters, your diameter would be 0.84 meters. But the dispersion inside this circle is not flat. It's actually a normal distribution with an edge of two sigma. So basically, if we take this line that's extending through the middle of our circle and we kind of turn it sideways and we look at the distribution of shells just on that line alone, it would look like this. So you'll see a lot of shells will hit right near the center and they'll trail off at the edges. So if you rotate that, 180 degrees so that you get a three-dimensional picture of this three-dimensional dispersion value, it would look like this. So what does that mean at range though, right? So when you fire your gun, the shell originates where the gun barrel meets the mantlet, and this projects a cone to the dispersion circle at 100 meters. And then the dispersion beyond that increases linearly. So that means that at 100 meters, your shell would have a dispersion of 0.42 using the previous example or this T34-3 here. And then at 200 meters, it would have a dispersion of 0.84. And then at 400 meters, it would have a dispersion of 1.68. Okay, so enough about dispersion. Let's talk about what actual gun handling is, okay? So gun handling is expressed by basically two main attributes. The first is bloom, which is how big your reticle gets due to penalties from moving your vehicle and rotating the turret and things like that. And then the second half is aim time, which is how quickly your reticle shrinks after it has a bloom penalty to it. So pretty much vehicles with uh, good gun handling are characterized by low dispersion penalties, which causes the bloom and really fast aim time, which is how quick the circle will shrink. Okay, so let's talk about bloom first. So bloom is basically calculated by using the base dispersion times the penalty. So if we bring back our friend, the T34-3, the base dispersion is right there, and you can see that that goes into the equation there. So then the question is, what's this red penalty that I'm looking at here? Well, that is, and it might shock you, it, it's a little bit of an equation, but I promise it's not as scary as it looks. So what it is, is basically a Euclidean norm. So this treats all of your penalties as a vector and then uses this uh, root sum squared equation to temper the values. So essentially, without getting too deep into the math, it's a way to have the game use a simplistic mathematical model to dictate the bloom, the spread, without it getting too out of control too quickly, which is what just adding them would do. So anyways, let's talk about the variables inside this equation, ignoring all the math around it. So the hull variable there is actually, if you take your moving variable for this tank, it's 0.15, and multiply it by its forward or reverse speed, that would be the contributing factor to the bloom in this instance. This does not take into account rotation. That's the next one. 
So the next is the rotation of just the hull. So if you keep your turret straight and you aren't moving forward or backwards, that is just the zero point rotation of your vehicle. Now remember that if you're traveling straight and turning slightly, you will have a penalty to moving forward and a penalty for that slight rotation at the same time. And they'll both contribute to this equation. But what happens if you're moving the turret? Well, that's the next one. So the turret is also part of this. And if you are in a casemate TD, this includes the gun moving within the mantlet, within its uh, arc, okay? So the last one here is after firing. It's just a strict penalty after you take a shot, it just adds that bloom to your gun, okay? Now, keep in mind that this equation does have more things in it. I just am not putting them here because they're less common, such as a damaged gun will increase your dispersion um, and other penalties such as um, being stunned and things like that. Those will all add to your dispersion values. So um, basically, what does this math actually tell us, though? What, 13, this is complicated. What does this actually mean? Well, what this means is the faster you're moving, the bigger your bloom will be. The faster you're rotating your turret and your tank, the bigger the bloom you'll have. The more of these you combine into one movement, that's the, like, the largest bloom you can have. So if you're in vehicles that are really sensitive to bad dispersion penalties, like the KV-2 using the derp gun, for example, when you're trying to engage an enemy that you don't want to spend a lot of time aiming against, sometimes the best thing to do is to pre-aim in their general location before exposing your tank and then using the R key or that, that custom key that just does one notch of acceleration. This limits your forward movement, which limits that dispersion penalty. And if you're already pre-aimed at the enemy, you're going to limit how much you have to move your turret. So these can all help you when using vehicles like that to reduce that sort of bloom that you'll experience. And you can then use those sorts of tips to help you manage vehicles with bad gun handling. So that's one half of it. But what about aim time? OK, so let's look at the tool tip for aim time in the game, right? So basically, it's the time it takes for the aiming circle diameter to decrease by 60% or to reduce to a value of 40% of its original size. All right, so let's say we take the M26 Pershing. Okay, you can see right here in the tanks.gg uh, stats that the value is 2.21 seconds. This is assuming a vehicle that has no equipment, no consumables, and a 100% screw, uh, crew skills, okay? So if we were to take that, and we're gonna take this vehicle and we'll drive it at 40 kilometers an hour, okay? And then we'll move the turret at five degrees per second, all right? And then we stop both of those things at the exact same time to a speed of zero. Uh, we'll see that the, the, the bloom penalties actually push our dispersion just a hair above two, okay? So this means that our dispersion penalty is larger than 60% of our 0.35 full dispersion. So this means that it'll actually take the aim time longer than just the described 2.21 seconds to shrink all the way down to 0.35. And so this graph helps you helps illustrate what that looks like. So basically, what does aim time actually mean? So in this instance, aim time is how steep that line is to get to your full aim. The lower the aim time, the steeper that curve is, all right? So this is pretty basic introduction to how all of these systems work together. So the whole point of doing this first video here is to help you understand the absolute basics of how the gun handling in the game works. So that in the next two videos, what we're actually going to be covering and what is actually the point of this series is comparing how the different pieces of equipment and consumables influence those gun handling characteristics. And then the video after that will be how the crew skills impact how the gun handling works in the game. So if you guys are interested to see how things like food, 
bents, vert stabs, brothers in arms, and all those other very specific perks that the crews can have influence the way these dynamics work, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, ring the little bell and we'll definitely see those videos within the next few weeks here. If you found value in this video, please consider liking it. If you have any questions about what we talked about in this video, make sure you stop over to my Twitch channel. I stream live every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday evening. Thanks guys, and we'll see you in the next video. This was literally a waste of tinfoil. A perfectly good piece of tinfoil, utterly wasted.